good. So, um, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and start. So, welcome to Art with Lorian in the studios live Wednesday, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. And we meet every Wednesday here at Waterfront Studios where I share um, about my art making process. And I am in the middle of creating this painting. And I have invited a special guest with us today to, before I get started on the artwork and go through the, the, the process and share with you, I've invited a special friend of mine, a guest, in other words, a good friend and special guest to share um, a little bit about, just really just guide us through a, um, uh, a meditation, guided visualization, relaxation exercise, and she'll talk all about it, and she'll she'll share. So welcome, Amy, Vivek, Ava, welcome. And I'm over, we're live on YouTube. You won't see her, but you might be able to hear her. So I'm just gonna let Christina of My Present Heart start and take it away. So go ahead, welcome, and thank you for being here with us, Christina. Thank you, Lorian. I really enjoy every week joining this live broadcast. Me too. And learning from you. So it's oh, good. Really a great experience. So maybe a little louder. A little bit louder. Yeah. Maybe I can. Maybe if I lift this up slightly. I think it's just the microphone. Hey. Okay. Hi, Amy. Amy's joining us from Ohio. How awesome. Yay. She came. She came on the, the scene. <laughs> All right, so Christina's gonna do a really nice, um, yeah, go ahead, exercise. So with, with my present heart, um, we combine different techniques in terms of our coaching practice, our centering and healing work. So what Lorian asked me to do is make a, bring us into the present moment, make us very present for this art class. Yeah. So what you can do is sit very comfortably wherever you're sitting and just allow yourself to start to step within. So even though you're seeing us on the screen and you might hear noises around you, but allow your attention to go within yourself, within your being. And what we're going to do initially to become present is start to observe. And by observing these things, it will make us really present to them, but also it's going to relax us. So the first thing we'll do is start to observe your breath. So as you're sitting there in a peaceful and present state, just go ahead and breathe normally. And also feel that breath See if you can make it a little bit deeper into your abdomen as you breathe in. And just be really present to your breath. So eyes open or closed? Does it matter? You can keep them open or closed. Okay. Whatever you're comfortable with. I'll mm -hmm. keep mine open. Okay. So taking deep breaths into the belly. And then releasing and exhaling. And observing your breath is a good first step to make you present. So also what you can do is you can bring your awareness and attention to a focal point. So you can pick a point in front of you or the center of your forehead is also like a good place. Just like or the butterfly. <laughs> you can look at this butterfly. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And what we want to do is, as we're looking at well, a single focal point or focusing internally, your eyes are closed, bring all your awareness and attention that's scattered into your day, into the past, anywhere in the past, and bring all of that attention onto this focal point within. And likewise, bring all your attention and awareness that's in the future. Like if you're thinking about this class or the rest of the day or this week, just bring all that attention back into this present moment. 
And as you become really present here, you can start to observe your body as you're sitting here in awareness. Just start to observe your body. What are you feeling physically? And notice if you have any pain or tension anywhere in the body. And without any judgment, just witness the feelings you're having physically. And just be really present with it. And then take all your attention to that place, which might be in need of relaxation or good energy. Just take all your attention there. And as you feel whatever is happening in that part of the body, just gently ask that part of your body what is in need of you in this moment, in this present moment. Maybe it wants to relax more. Maybe it wants more breath or oxygen to that place. Or maybe it wants love from you. So just allow it to have that, whatever the body needs. And now observe what's happening for you energetically at this moment. Just see, like, do you have more energy, less energy right now? Do you feel more energy in one part of the body than another? And just observe without any judgment what's happening energetically. And as you do that, take all your awareness and attention to any place that feels like it could energetically use a boost. Mm. And check mm. what does that part of your energetic body need from you in this moment. And allow it to have that when it's needing in this moment. And now, in this state of presence, just become very aware of what you're feeling right now. Mm. So what are you feeling right now? And without any judgment, feel those feelings mm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Just feel them. Maybe you're feeling anxious for the class to start, or maybe you're feeling relaxed. Maybe you're feeling happy that mm. this is this time of the week again. So whatever you're feeling, mm. just really sit in that feeling. Feel it. Be with it. And check if there's something that that feeling would like from you in this moment. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling joy or peace, maybe maybe you want to uh, multiply that feeling and feel it more. And if you're feeling anxiety or tiredness, maybe those feelings need acceptance in this moment. So just check what, what you need in this moment in relation to what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And now you can take your awareness in this present moment and just check what's happening mentally. What's going through your mind right now? What are you thinking? Like clouds <laughs> passing across the sky when mm -hmm. thoughts are coming and going. And don't have any judgment mm -hmm. on your thoughts, just witness them. And let your mind know that whatever thoughts are important, after you are done with this class, you can come back to those thoughts. If they're important, they'll still be there. So just, <laughs> just without getting attached to anything, allow yourself to be present and allow the extra thoughts to come and go. And now, finally, take a moment and just really have this experience of becoming one with what you want to experience during this class. So bring this into your mind's eye. You know, maybe you want to experience that creative energy and that juiciness of being creative. Or maybe you want to feel the the wings of that butterfly 
and you want to learn how to paint while immersing <laughs> yourself in the experience of the object. And really, you know, in this moment, maybe we can feel what it feels like to be a butterfly like this. To be so beautiful and free and light and present. To just be living, <laughs> living on the wings of light. Yes. And enjoying life. And, and as you learn to paint and create, Mm -hmm. That is like being this butterfly because in that moment mm -hmm. you're being present to the beauty of life and to creation and to how magical life really is. Magical life really is. So as we become really present in this moment here mm -hmm. and with Lorian as, as she starts the class just if you see yourself going into other thoughts, just bring it back because the more present we are in this experience, the more joy we're going to experience. That's true. And the more joyful we feel, the more creative we can be, and the more free we'll be. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Hi. You. Hi, Ve Hi, vegan Reiki angel. Thank you, Christina. So, um, Today, like I, we announced in a few different places, I have a special guest, Christina from My Present Heart. She just led just a brief kind of um, tune in and um, so we could just be really present and energetically, emotionally, physically, mentally. And uh, you know, the past is past, the future is, we're creating it but the moment is where life is happening and whether you had a good day so far, not so good, whatever little things have happened, whether they're highs or lows, it's, it's the present moment here that's most important. And um, so thank you for reminding us with that. That was so amazing. And it's so simple. And like I was sharing with Christina earlier, sometimes, like I had a, a little test today. I had some things that um, weren't ex expected, especially when I knew I was doing, I'm doing this class on Wednesdays and it really challenged me. And then I got to like pull back and just like, okay. And what's really, I was sharing with Christina is sometimes the thing that helps the most is just like taking a deep breath and um, just taking a deep breath and breathing deeply and just, you know, tuning in to the whole body just kind of scan or just like breathe deeply for a few minutes so um again so this is streaming live on my youtube channel the youtube channel um is art with lorian if you search that we're also here on instagram live and in stories and it'll be loaded up later to igtv for replay and um, anyway, so I wanted to sh ask Christina, thank you for coming on. Did you want to share anything else about the work that My Present Heart does? You can always find her at My Present Heart. Um, she, if you, I don't know, how My does that work? MyPresentHeart.com. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can um, look on MyPresentHeart.com and show and, all of the coaching and heart circles we do with with my husband, Rene, yes. who is um, a wonderful heart-centered coach. Yes. And we also, um, I published a book She's this last year, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. the link is on the website. So if you're interested to know more of what we do. But also on Instagram. Instagram, if you go yes, to to yes. my present heart no spaces just the whole thing oh thank you ava yeah she if you go to my present heart and insta just I, I think i don't know if you click on your picture i'm not sure what happens but she is there you can follow her connect um she was so generous to come on today and to do this for us and her book is amazing i read it a few times and i could keep reading it because it's it's part part memoir autobiographical and part uh, useful essential tools for living living a happy peaceful and full life right so um, 
anyway, and then they do a lot of other amazing work too. But though I really just wanted to have Christina chime in and and share. And I know she um, she's been a regular on this series too with me, and she gives me a lot of support. So. Um, and same with Vivek. They're both like really wonderful friends and and I've known them a really long time. So um and different Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. Oh cool. Yeah, me too. And yeah, it's on YouTube too. It'll this will be replayed. But anyway, anything else you want to share? Thank you, Christina. Well nice to meet everyone. Thank yeah. And this is just a taster. Yeah, this is just a yeah. taster. She, they have a lot of free videos on YouTube, a lot. And that's also, if you go, I'm pretty sure to My Present Heart, they have a way to get there from there. But if you just, on YouTube, search My Present Heart, they have an amazing um, YouTube channel with lots and lots of free guided meditations that are audio with the beautiful ocean view of I think Big Sur, so the Pacific Ocean. So anyway, they Christina and Vivek offer a lot of amazing resources for the world, and they've also um, offered to support first responders right now. So if you have, if you know any first responders, nurses, doctors, anyone in the medical field who's working on the front line to help folks right now with COVID-19, please reach out to Christina or feel free to um, because they are offering um, services gratis, free, complimentary to support humanity right now. So I just, I feel like it's so, she's so, there's just who are really working in the hospitals, clinics in the, that setting. So um, thank you <laughs> on this and thank you so much. Okay, right, see you later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Bye for now. So, wasn't that amazing? I know. Um, we will be together for another about 40 minutes at the most. So, I just want to get started. I just, it was so important that. I feel for me to uh, and to share um, a wonderful resource that is available um, in my friends who offer something so important for our times right now, which is peace of mind and um, being peaceful inside, despite the current chaos and the challenges that we are facing out there. And um, so, what I thought I would do today, picking up, is um. If you've been following along, and if not, here is the butterfly. And I thought I would just continue to bring in the mixed media elements. I'm working with pigment powders. I'm working with gloss, clear gloss varnish. It looks like this. I use this quite a lot. And I do list all the materials in my YouTube channel that I use. It's easy to go over there. You don't even have to subscribe. If you do, you'll get a reminder. But, um, and then I think I think if you've been following, you know I use, um, I'm using acryl gouache. Acryl gouache is a hybrid of acrylic and gouache paint mixed together. I'm using three colors today. I'm using permanent yellow deep. It's kind of like a nice warm goldish yellow. I'm using white, titanium white, or plain white. And I'm using a color called permanent scarlet. It's a Kind of a cooler red and my palette already has some paint so i can't lift it up and show you but i'm also going to be oh i showed you this i'm also going to be using da, 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 these powders so this is what i'm using for the powders i'm using this medium to blend all of these elements together and you'll see when i start to bring things on to the i don't know if you can see here the um there we go the um the the canvas i'm using these powders and i use these quite a bit in my work these are pigment powders they are finely ground and granulated very finely granulated mica colored mica mica with pigment and shine and sheen and they create dimension and interest and they're so do that so um what i thought i would do is i'm putting in layers i work in layers and i work in um, you know, like this is dry. Um, I work, you know, 
optically mixing directly on the canvas. Also, I'm using a palette on the side too. So I can't hold it up, but that's what's going on. Um, and okay, so I'm gonna start to just, I thought I would just put in some of those lights today and I'm working directly on this butterfly and um, I have all these wonderful oranges, as you can see, in that kind of go around the outside, that outline, also into the, the different separation, the areas of the wings. And I do work abstract. I, I, I work from a, a picture. I do work from an, an image, usually, sometimes straight from my imagination. Um, kind of flora and fauna that I'm working with in this new collection of paintings is I'm using images. So however you, I don't know how everyone gets your ideas. If you use images, it's totally, hey, hi, Mira. Um, it's, it's okay to use images because they are basically, they're a starting point. You know, I'm not intending on copying it. I don't want it to look realistic. It's not supposed to look like an actual photograph or the picture. I'll show you what I'm working from and you'll see how different it is. And I use it as a springboard. I use it as inspiration and a lot of artists do this. This is what I'm using. So you can see it's black and white. Um, I'm using well, it's a little greenish actually, it has a green tone to it. But I'm using this image mwah, um, because I wanted to do a side view, a profile view of the butterfly. And that's why I'm using this particular image. I'm making up the colors, um, using warm colors. And the reason why I chose these colors um, is because I wanted to contrast to my background, which you know is this beautiful green that we created on one of these lives. So I'm working with the color wheel, complementary colors. Uh, yes, so I'm getting some wonderful chat comments in Insta. I have some amazing friends and family in there from all over the world. I see my sister from San Francisco and, and a friend from Laguna Niguel and She's asking about this. And yeah, I created this monarch in these other classes. So I do these every Wednesday at three. This is a completed mixed media painting. It's a monarch butterfly. Yep. So um, I, what I'm doing with all of these paintings is I'm, I'm doing the background in a particular color kind of arbitrarily, but I'm using, for the most part, greens and blues. And then the butterflies themselves will, you know, re relate or interact or, you know, come off the canvas and that are warm against these darker, uh, cool colored backgrounds. So that's the concept of, of my color choices of the color scheme. And like I was saying, this oranges and yellows and golds, this is not the way the butterfly looks in real life. And that's where I, you know, kind of go off into my own tangent with using a source image. I'll, I'll start with the source image because as I've said, you know, and you know, butterflies are hard to kind of get still or to catch and live ones. And I don't want to get a dead one. So you know, it's a springboard. So I go from there and then I use my imagination, use the color choices and the materials. Like I'm using all these golds now and I'm just putting in layers and I want it to dry a little bit. I frequently use this hair dryer here in my work. Hey, Christina, I use this hair dryer to in my mixed media work and also in my teaching. Um, mixed media classes because this is the fastest, most effective way on a low setting to dry your work, especially your water-based um, paints and, and materials quickly. And then you can move top. I would blow this off, blow this with, you know, blast it with warm heat and um, dry it and then be able to do another layer. Maybe I put whites in, lights, darks, more, more textures and building up those layers um, like mixed media allows you to do and really is kind of, I would say the specialty of mixed media is building and layering and 
and you're building a painting just like you're building a house so there's many um there's so many ways to do it if it's hot outside you can put the painting out in uh, in the sun, it is warm where I am. Um, but like if I'm working in my studio, you know, just the hair dryer is great. And I'm going to just take this question. So is gouache part acrylic paint, part watercolor paint? No. So I'm using, so regular plain gouache. That's a great question. It's plain, um, simple gouache out of a tube or even in a pan is watercolor paint and gypsum powder chalk. It is, that's what it is. It's watercolor paint with, with blended in the formula is, is the, the gypsum. Gypsum is a naturally forming mineral from the earth. And it is really, it's an opaque paint. Watercolors are coming, they're usually transparent. Wash is watercolor and uh, the gypsum. And then acrylic is totally separate. Acrylic paints are plastic, they're polymers, and they are also water-based, but they are completely different than gouache and watercolor. So those are three different types of paints that I've just described. Watercolor, transparent, translucent, gouache, opaque watercolors, and acrylic paints. And um, acrylic paints come in many forms. You have heavy body, fluid, high fluid, liquid, either in a tube, in a bottle, what I'm using, and that's a great question, thank you. I'm using a hybrid paint. And my hybrid paint is, they're, they're acryl, acrylic, and gouache together. Okay, they, are, they come in a tube pre-made. This is a hybrid formula that this company called Turner, which I really like. I get them on Jerry's Artorama. They are made in Japan, and I really like them. This is a, a, a new paint. This is a new invention. And I'm getting another wonderful question. And so what medium? So there's a few different mediums you can use. And a medium is something that, that thins the paint out. A medium is also creates more you know, viscosity. It creates more luc uh, lucidity. It creates more transparency, translucency. <laughs> Uh, meaning light, more light can come through. So these are all water-based paints. One thing that acrylic gouache, acro gouache, and watercolors have in common, so acrylic gouache, watercolors, and acryl gouache, is they're all water-based. They're all water-based mediums or paints. So you can use just your regular water, water in a cup. And I use these little uh, these are great containers. They are ice cream repurposed containers. So I love them because they're nice and thick and they last a very long time. So you can just use regular water. You can also use liquid mediums that are polymers or plastics in their composite. So for instance, I'm, I use this one. So to answer your question, what medium am I using with these colors? I'm using a gloss, high gloss varnish. I use this quite a bit. High gloss varnish, that's what it is. It's it's a varnish that I use as a medium. I use it in a different way than it's sold as. I also use this, this is a matte medium. I also use the varnish medium combo that exists. These manufacturers make a lot of different types of similar things. So you just pick what's best for you. Um, with watercolor, you don't use a polymer medium. With watercolor, you don't have to. You just use water, really. And another note about watercolor and gouache. The big difference is that gouache, they'll sell a white gouache paint. And with watercolor, as watercolor artists know, you use the paper. You use the paper, the white paper, if it's white paper, you use the white of the paper to to serve as your white paint. So it's really just negative space is what becomes the white on a watercolor painting. So hopefully I asked, whoops, hopefully I answered your question um, over there. And um, so today I'm using water and I'm using this stuff. I know there's serious art makers who want to know all these technicalities. So um, that's a great question. And what I use with my, my powders is I use 
I use the mediums because they're thicker. If I use water, it wouldn't go. It wouldn't work. It would be too thin. It would. It would. It would. It would spread. You know that the the these powder pigments they are powders. There's no liquid to them. They're just like a a little container of powder. Um, so you do have to use some liquid, a clear liquid. Um, And so I use these varnishes to turn these powders into a liquid format for my work. Um, you can also pour the, the, there's many ways to use these. This is just the way I'm showing in this, using in this painting. So we can go into that another time. So I'm going to take one more question here. So uh, the question was, let me see here. Question was, oh, I can't really see the question now. Oh no. Okay, so the question is, sorry, I can't see the lines from my message. So the question is about varnishing. And um, yeah, varnishing, there's a couple ways of varnishing after you complete a mixed media painting. You can use a spray varnish. You can use, a lot of people use, it's non-toxic Aquanet hairspray. Um, you can use so for hands-free, you use the, uh, the can. If you want to brush on a varnish like this, I recommend using something like this. And these are painter's sponge brushes. These help evenly spread varnishes onto paintings to seal it. Um, they don't leave brush marks. They don't leave bristle marks. Maybe they make little lines, but you just really have to go in and, and I mean, this is, these things all take a lot of time. I have a painting I spent an hour varnishing because I didn't want any marks whatsoever. And it just, it's a, it can be very laborious. I don't know how else to explain it <laughs> other than the fact that, um, yeah. So I'm not sure what the question is. I messed up varnishing. Okay, I'm, ask, I'm answering a question here. Um, whoops. Uh-oh, sorry, that's the kitchen. Look at that, okay. Um, I'm just trying to see this question here. Um, let me see. Um, the line of the brush I use more. Is there any way to correct that? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know how to correct that right now off the top of my head without seeing it, Eva. So, um, my my. I don't know, maybe just going over the painting again, over the, I can't see the lines. Yeah, I'm not sure what the question is, so I'm not, I'm not really understanding it, I think. Sorry. I don't know if you want to see the lines or you don't want to see the lines, but um, okay, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So there we go. So I'm just kind of going over I don't want to talk too much. I want to make sure we get something done here. I'm going to use a different brush. Mm -hmm. So these brushes work pretty well to to do lines. This is a chisel brush, and this is a new a new brush I just got. Chisel brushes um, are great for outlining. Yeah, like for, for me, um, as far as varnishing, I, um, yeah, I mean, if you're using a, a gouache, you probably want to spray because the gouache is water soluble. So if you're using gouache paints, they're an open system of painting, of paints they stay water soluble, then you're going to want to definitely use more of a spray. If you're using acrylics, you can brush on, and I recommend these sponge brushes. Um, and it's, it's because they are, you know, they're pretty, they don't have bristles, even though it's a brush, it's just maybe like a painter's sponge tool. Um, you can find them at hardware stores. They're relatively inexpensive. 
And I think it's a good idea to have a few sizes of those because the bigger the canvas, the bigger sponge tool you're going to want to have. Uh, in addition, yeah, um, gouache, I would do a spray varnish. You can get low odor, low odor. You can also use the Aquanet hairspray to seal it up. You can use, um, I mean, if it's a professional paint, you're going to want to use more of the professional art supplies. But for kids' work, you can use Mod Podge, which is a nice, shiny, or matte uh, sealer, but that's that's different. That's more for student work and uh, maybe something that you wouldn't sell. Maybe. Um, so it's not professional. I'd say it's more like crafting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. So I'm just going over just to pull up and show you what I'm doing. I put a little bit of the red outlines around the edges of the butterfly and the shapes of the wings and those like kind of striations. And let me just do one thing up here. Let's see here. Ooh. Let me just go here real quick. I don't know how to unpin that. Uh, okay, great. Okay. I'm um, sorry, can't see that. Okay. Oh, um, you don't have, so there's a question about creating a new painting if you don't like the varnishing. You can, if it's on canvas, you can create a new painting, just put a nice coat of gesso. Um, I like to apply gesso with these large sponge brushes as well, maybe the bigger one. You can always just go back and rework your painting. You don't have to start over. Uh, I do that frequently. I mean, definitely. But yeah, it's a process. I mean, I had some, I, I made a mistake on my monarch butterfly back there. And, um, you know, I just, I could go back and rework work with it, but I'm, I'm leaving it. To me, it was a mistake. It was like, oops, I didn't mean to, to do that. And then, I mean, I, I like to think of them as happy accidents, but at the same time, you can decide your, it's your choice, right? To, um, it was my choice what whether I want to to re you know go back in and keep working on it. So I decided just to to leave it. And sometimes yeah, that can be a good solution. But if it really bothers you, you can always create a new one or or adjust it. So I'm just doing a little bit more of this outlining so what I'm doing is, I know there's a lot of markings on this butterfly's uh, wings, a lot of markings. So I'm going to take my time and put them in. And, you know, this is going to be a multi-class and Wednesday process. So these, I can't say enough about these. These awesome chisel brushes, they have an angle at, or hard edge painting. I work kind of loosely, but if you're doing anything that you have a very, uh, like retro, you know, maybe 70s or that whole mid-century kind of painting, you want to have a nice, with those shapes, right, and those lines, you want to have a really nice angled chisel brush. And in different sizes helps too. This is the, the one I have today. I think I have, oh yeah, here's another one. So these are really great brushes. They have a, a chisel. Um, so each brush has its function. Round ones are great for putting in a line that goes from thin to, to thicker. Um, you know, there's square, there's filbert, there's these really sweet little pointy ones. See how teeny and tiny that one is? This is a teeny little brush. But I'm using this one today. It's working out pretty well. Um, so I want to know what you'll, you're you working on. What are you working on? Anyone in Insta want to share? I know that there are some mixed media artists in there. What are you working on these days? 
I was hoping, I'm hoping, you know, my intention for these gatherings really is like a meetup and to share and interact and learn from you what you're making and to find out. Um, I mean, I love, now I'm gonna add a little bit more white. I'll hold up what I've done. I'm gonna pause right there. And I, you probably, it doesn't probably look that different, but I did do, some, <laughs> to me it does. I did some um, re-emphasis outlining on that red orange, put some gold in. I'm gonna put some white now. I'm gonna mix in some white and create kind of a lighter. So I'm doing this, here's my palette. Um, it's got this nice red orange, a white, and the golds, and the little bit of this color here. This is today I'm using brilliant gold of these pigment powders. So I'm just gonna, um, yeah, Let's see here. Oh, that's a nice thing. And I'm gonna mix optically mix here. I don't want to. I don't want it to be pink. So that's what's starting to happen. So I've got to get some yellow. There's a little pink going on. That's what I don't want. So these are this these these paints that I talked about, these acryl gouache, these are a new invention. This is something new. These are um, you know, I just learned about this last year. It was kind of like my dream because I work in both, but my favorite is gouache, and I thought God makes acryl gouache. And so I got some and I've been experimenting with it, and I like it, it's very smooth. Um, it's, they are little, 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 little tubes. So a little does go a long way, but if you're doing a large, 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 super large painting, that's like four by five feet or 20 feet wide by 10 feet or something like that, you'd want to use something different. You'd want to, um, yeah, that the, those will get used up very quickly. So I just put a little bit of these dark sort of like a medium orangey pink and I'll hold up and show you what I'm doing. I'm just loosely painting. I started to put some medium, uh, this little mixture here of the kind of goldish yellow. It's a nice warm kind of goldenrod color. And I'm mixing, it has a little bit of the red orange, which is actually called permanent scarlet, a little bit of it. This is just to add some texture and interest to my butterfly in the areas that are darker on the wings. So this is what I'm And it's in a very organic process. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna continue here. And then what we'll do is I'll end this video stream soon. I'll be ending it in about uh, five to 10 minutes maximum. So if you have anything that you wanna ask me, you wanna share, I'm happy to, to communicate and to chat with you and to answer those live questions. Yeah, okay. Now I'm leaving the body of the butterfly alone right now. It's it's kind of bright red. And I like to work loosely. I don't want it to be too hard edge and, and filled in or colored in. I want it to have like different shapes. And these are abstract shapes. I'll show you in a minute what I'm doing. Are there any questions? How about over in YouTube? Okay. I mean, I'm just just kind of, I'm just winging it here. I mean, I have a plan. I really want it to have all the wonderful texture, but, you know, as far as how I go about it, it's very organic and intuitive. I will be refining these, these choices and decisions as I move along, but I'll just hold up and show you what I did here. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting, okay. So here's what I have so far. So it's true. I just added a bunch of shapes and some darker colors in here. And you see the body I'm leaving alone, the body is just that red, red orange. So I'm gonna address the body maybe next time. Um, 
and I'm going to switch waters because here's what my water looks like. So now I have a new clean container and I'm going to work a little bit more. And um, let's see, what else can I share with you today? What would you like to know? Mm. I would like to share, oh, this just dripped, but it's, it's okay. I got this, um, I my my original Stabilo white pencil that I do my drawing in here. See, I do a drawing on top of the background in a white pencil. And I was sharing with Nick a couple of weeks ago about this white pencil. And I found um, where I like to shop on Jerry's online. They're based in North Carolina. But I found this pencil by a company I really love based in Switzerland. It's Swiss made. It's called, the company's called Caran d'Ache. And it's a white, water-soluble museum aquarelle, and it's sold in a three-pack. And I recommend this type of water-soluble pencil for drawing on top of a background. So the, the background, like in my case, was this green, all these greens with a lot of a lot of, you know, I had all these textures, and, and if you look at the, the green, there's a lot going on here. There's like almost a marbling, marbleized kind of effect. There's lots of 3D elements, and it's pretty dark. So if I just used a regular graphite or lead pencil, I wouldn't really be able to see my drawing. So since I wanted to draw a butterfly, and I used the white, the water-soluble white pencil instead of a white colored pencil that's more waxy is because this white this water solubility will will actually you can erase it with with water so you can put your finger in some water just like this or a brush or a paper towel or tissue and you can literally just wipe off that white um, pencil because it's water they mix with they mix they are movable and they can be erased so a regular eraser isn't going to do the trick. It's just simple water, just simple water. And also when you paint over it, it, it absorbs into the paint. So this is one of like my little trade secrets that I like to do when I'm drawing on top of something that is a background already. And I want to be able to see it so I can go in and then paint. So I just wanted to share that with you. This is just came in the mail the other day. Um, I am just ordering things online now. I'm not going to any store so much. But um, it's also listed in my suggested materials. Um, I like to share what I use in case you're in, you know, looking for stuff and you don't know where to start. Um, are there any other comments? I'm going to go ahead and end this live session. I'm going to clean my brushes really well. Acrylics have to be clean. This is acryl gouache, so I want to save my brushes and use them as long as I can. So I like to get those acrylic brushes in the water ASAP. I use a paper towel to wipe off the excess and they do need to be washed again in the sink. But this is where I'm gonna end today. I'm so glad you could tune in and join me. I'm so glad Christina could join in. Thank you for being in my studio here today and for asking questions and interacting. And so, um, yeah, so I see there's one more huge question in there. I don't have any tips right now. She's asking about putting, uh, doing dripping and things like that on a large canvas. Um, I don't, I don't know. I would just think that um, work somewhere where you can put a huge drop cloth on. And if you Google Jackson Pollock, you can see his work and how he works steps right on the canvas um but if it's stretched okay gallery wrapped yeah you're gonna have to work around it and not step on it so um yeah that's a great question thank you so much i just have a couple minutes here so um let me see about a huge gallery wrap canvas yeah so i would work outdoors i would work on a drop cloth if you're painting large I think definitely the ground, if you're doing a, any kind of dripping drop cloth underneath it, especially indoors. Um, if you're working outdoors, you want to protect your garage floor and the sidewalk or the driveway, in other words. And, um, and also you can get unstretched canvas because you're going to want to maybe step on it. So 
um, in the dry areas and maybe even get a little messy. So just think about that. And then you're going to want to um, step on it without it being on a canvas frame. Okay, stretch. So a couple, couple little tips there. I hope it helped. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, we'll see you in the studio. Bye. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to be on YouTube here just for a couple minutes. Um, this is the final day. Thank you for joining me, whether you're watching live or in the replay. I did put in some details in the wings today. I'm really happy about that. And I love the mixed media element of the gold, if you can see kind of shimmering in that light. So 